Hi there and welcome to Good Enough Scenery in the next part in my modular Osgiliath board construction. So this is all about the lower parts of the board, so not the scatter train, oh hi Jazz, it's, but it's everything else that's uh, included on the board here. So revealing here the resin poured sections here, I'm going to be showing you how I did the rubble, I'm going to be showing you how I did the cobblestones, I'm going to be showing you all the little bits and pieces that uh, make the lower part of the board look as awesome as it does uh, and the scatter terrain is going to be covered in future videos. So. Let's get into it. Now I'm going to show you the next stage of the process which involves turning something which looks like this into something that looks like that. It's uh, a bit of work. Uh, I think it's absolutely worthwhile and when it's completely finished I think it's going to look absolutely amazing. There is a 2 centimeter or 20 mil trim of blocks and all of these are tw roughly 20 mil square. So what I've done is I've marked out 20 uh, mil from each edge here. So what I'm going to do is just draw lines to join those up. And, and it's nice to be fairly accurate with this, but you don't have to be absolutely and completely perfect about the whole thing. So the way that I'm doing this is once I've drawn the lines on, I'm lining up my ruler. So I've got a uh, 14 there. Um, so every two centimeters, I'm going to draw a line. So draw one at twelve, draw one at ten, eight, six, four, and then two. Now like that. Same here. So that's the, the first stage of it. And then what I'm doing is I'm essentially just drawing around it. All I'm using this is a biro, and then I'm kind of keeping the biro at an angle, and that kind of rounds off the edges of the. I don't want these to be completely perfect and uniform. I do want them to be uh, angular slightly, so a bit of pressure, and it's literally just drawing around it, kind of cutting the cutting up the corners as I go. Next stage is to do that on the outside of these other three building footprints. So next up we're going to do the edge which is done in a very similar way but rather than a 20mm thing it's a 10mm thing. So I've taken the liberty of doing some markings already. So we're going to line this up along here. We're going to draw our line. I'm not going to let our ruler go all over the place. Exactly the same as before but with a 10mm thing. Just line your ruler up and just align at every 10 mil, and then exactly the same thing just to finish it off is just to draw around them. Next time you see this, the other borders will be done as well. Okay, borders done, and the final step is to do our cobblestones. So, there's two ways of doing this, I'm going to be using both. So, I do have a, uh, a 10 centimeter cobblestone roller which is going to help speed things up a lot, so let me show you how I am doing this. I want the cobblestones to look like they're all kind of flowing in the same direction, so I'm putting this at the widest point I can, so that's going to be from about here, uh, lining this up with this edge, and then pushing down hard and just rolling it out, like so. So you can get into these corners here to a degree, so let's say we're going to start here, push nice and hard on it. Now, once we get to about here, we start putting more pressure on this end, more and more and more until we're basically just on the edge of it. And that means that we get right into that corner. This bit here hasn't been done as much. Um, and the bits that you don't get to, we can just grab our biro out and we can just start randomly drawing rectangular, circular, whatever shapes. I just try not to think about it too much and just kind of almost like doodle. Now it's gonna it's gonna be impossible to match up the exact same pressure, so you're gonna have different depths of cobblestones, but I feel like that would be the case with real life cobblestones anyway. So the smaller sections if you can get away with just doing that on it. But yeah, that's 
basically it. Roll the big areas that you can and draw in the ones that you can't. Then we've got two boards done and the real hope with this is that the line where they join is going to not be invisible obviously but it's going to be pretty hard to see. Next up we're going to take a ball of aluminium foil and to give this a more of a stony texture we're going to roll it across the whole board. Next up we are going to do this for this so that the idea with this is that we can have these built in with buildings and scattered terrain and whatever you like really but you also can leave them out and have uh, these bits can be uh, will be flooded they'll have bits of rubble and there'll be a res like a little dirty resin pour in there as well for both options now to do this we need two things we need a pen and we need a rolling pin um, or it doesn't have to be a rolling pin a hammer will be fine as well so first we want to line up this with the edges and hold that pretty firmly in place. And we're going to draw. From here you've got a couple of choices. Now for, for these ones here, they're not very big, so you know, trying to make it into a big hollow thing is a bit pointless. So literally just something heavy. And you'll see that the foam compresses a lot, it cracks, it breaks, um, and then once you put this back over, you see we've got this new texture to be working with, and that can be uh, filled in further with, uh, like I said, sand, stones, clock, whatever. Now, the other option with this, and probably something that I'd recommend for the larger ones, um, is to uh, try and cut something out of it. So this one I'm going to try and make kind of slope down from that way and that way so that means cutting out a whole bunch of this which uh, isn't the quickest or easiest thing to do to be perfectly honest so you can what you can do is cut it out like, like I just when I come at an angle and all these things the alternative is to kind of half cheat on this and that's what we're going to do with this one and so what I'm do is going to cut a square out of this So that is done and we can put that back in there in a bit. Before that though, I want to cut into these some. So I'm going to use my handheld hot wire cutter for this, I think. The idea here is just trying to create an angle on this. needing to be glued back in again. Um, so there you go, something like that, and the, that join is gonna get covered up once we put flock and stuff in. So another finishing touch, we can take our aluminium ball here and we can just roll it on all of it just to add a bit of texture to that. If you wanna do these with a knife, then just that you cut in at an angle, not going in too deep. Work your way around and then go across uh, diagonally. Something like that. That creates a kind of 
processing. So <coughs> that's your other option. Both are, <coughs> both are good. So. so in terms of the very basics of the board construction, that is half of the board done. Um, try and ignore the mess. We've got our base piece. We've got our bit for the top. Uh, we need to attach them together. I don't think there's any reason why not to right now. Uh, so I'm going to be using instant nails. Put a link for that in the description. Uh, this is pretty cheap stuff and is a really solid um, adhesion between the two. Um, I'm going to do it slightly differently to how I may have done it in previous videos. Normally I'm just going to slap it on and that's it. But it's um, I feel like it's kind of important. There's a you know, a good bond throughout the whole thing. Um, so what I'm going to do is this, chuck it down in a few places and then I'm going to use this spare bit of wood to smear it out a bit. Okay, just got that on, spread out pretty nicely. So I'm going to line up and this is practically to the mill, the right size. And so now it gives you a good amount of working time. And then what's going to happen? What's going to do? I'm going to do the rest of these, and I'm going to stack them up on top of each other. So what you won't see on camera is my favourite trick of just putting one of my kitchen stools on top. I'll probably put two on actually. It's as simple as that. So our things are all grooved, these nice and solid, and it's time to give them a base coat, which I'm going to do just with cheap white paint. So this is going to take a while with all of them, but makeup brush here and just kind of go over the entire thing. It takes a while, most of the white will be lost and maybe that get multiple coats of white on. Um, I am going to go for like a greyish colour for the floor so essentially it's a case of doing one coat and then seeing what it looks like. So I've changed up to a standard paintbrush Accuracy is not the key here, it's just getting, getting it on. So this is the board having had its base coat, um, but we don't want it to look like that when it's finished. What we want it to look like, what I want it to look like, is something a lot more like that. And that starts by putting pretty bright colours on, like these ones here. So that's what I'm going to do now, um, it's going to take a while, but I've got four different colours, I might make, choose some other ones here, so I've got a blue, I've got this which is bronze flesh tone, I've got a bone white, and I've got a leather brown, and essentially what's going to happen is, so the leather brown here, is that I'm going to just pick out random stones and just paint them really going to not try to think about exactly why I'm painting each one I'm painting, I'm just randomly putting some paint down. Yeah, I am going to get on with doing that with all of these different colours, but yeah, it's nothing more complicated than just picking out stones. I'm just, and you don't even have to do it neatly. It has to be, you know, you don't want to go all over the place, but essentially it's just roughly painting a stone. The only issue is that I've got to do all of this on this one and seven other tiles. Apparently I don't like myself very much. But it's gonna look flippin' awesome. So this took 25 minutes and put some music on and just painted it. Now one thing that um, I do is that when I change between each colour, I'm not even washing the brush off. Some of the stones get painted a kind of a new kind of random colour, just a, just a mixture of variety. Now it's time to dry brush over the whole thing. So I've um, got some white paint here, got my big brush. Now uh, you can, when you're dry brushing, you can get the paint off and all sorts of things. I think I find it's actually really good to get the excess off on a spare bit of foam that you might have laying around. see straight away it starts to kind of just bring those colours down from the bright ones that they were uh, to what they are going to be. So 
also going to start bringing up these stones here and get them looking a lot more stone-like. down with a wash for dry brushing it again so uh, I've made a uh, black wash using well, it's a kind of dark grey wash using paint and water and uh, fairy liquid um, it's a, I don't know what the, the mixture should be but it should been, end up being the consistency of milk so if they put it on the side it's not running like water would actually apply this and hopefully not ruin the whole thing Final thing on these stones is to do a final dry brush. I'm just going to dry brush the whole thing. That's how it's going to look. Now it wouldn't be Osgiliath unless it was completely ruined, so let's uh, completely ruin it now. Let's make, some, uh, let's make some rubble. So what I found to be the quickest way for me to cut the rubble up is to use my hot wire cutter to do long strips and then put those long strips together and then cut them into small pieces with a knife. Because doing the long strips with a knife is not quick. So anyway, I ended up with uh, just random sized pieces. Next I'm taking some um, greystone flock, yeah I'm going to tip a lot of this in. If you were making something that was like grey like that then that might be okay for flock but that's not. So this is the paint that I've mixed up as my base coat and essentially I'm going to dye, or paint as it's normally known, uh, I'm going to paint all of this this colour by just mixing it all in together. So what happens is this will end up kind of clumping together as the, the paint kind of sticks it together and then you just continue mixing. <coughs> and it ends up being a little bit like you're trying to make a batter because without actually having some scales or any ingredients because you go okay this is a little bit too runny I need to add some more greystone flock or this is not um, you know, there's not enough uh, plumping together going on. Um, I need to add some more paint. Now my suspicion is that we're going to need to add more paint to this because, as you might have noticed in the previous part, it was getting ridiculously difficult to uh, stir it without getting it everywhere. So I split it into two separate things. And if it wasn't like making a cake already, um, we're going to put it in the oven. Now, if you live somewhere where it's consistently sunny, then you can just lay this out on a bit of kitchen towel or something and leave it in the sun. That's what I did yesterday, but I'm in the UK and it is pissing it down, so I can't do that today. Um, so instead, we're going to experiment by putting this in the oven on a low heat. So what we want is to get this to a dryness where it's uh, where you can crumble it. That, that's what we really want. 
the cookery edition of Good Enough Scenery, apparently. So, I'm going to leave this in for... I'm going to check on it in 10 minute intervals and I'll let you know how long it, it was until it got dry and if it starts giving off horrible fumes then I'll put this as a warning to not do this and just... So it was in there about 40 minutes in total, I turned up the heat about halfway through and I was taking a bit of it out and you end up with this which has got the larger bits being about the right colour and then you've got the flock as well uh, and this is the really perfect rubble for the ruins and the rest of the board. So our rubble's done so it's time to put it down so it's very simple it's gonna put down PVA glue wherever we want rubble to be so, so we're gonna be filling up most of the things here So I'm going to get on with that and then I will show you where I've glued before I go any further. So all of these have been filled in with glue and also put some bits where there's uh, less space in between uh, so that uh, there can be rubble in the, the streets as well. And then from here it's a case of just kind of sprinkling it over. Now I'm going to be doing a resin pour up to the height of the bottom of this so I don't want anything sticking up too high. So having that in mind as I'm Doing it, but in this kind of central area, it can be absolutely fine, and in um, in the streets, it can be absolutely however I want it to be as well. Probably don't want anything too big right in the middle. Okay, now I've got some watered down PVA, which I'm going to use to completely soak this board. It's going to move the, some of the stuff around and that's fine. So trying to do it from above. That's done. I'm going to take some of the gravestone flock that we used to make this other flock and I'm going to get a dusting of this over the top. Final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use these cutout pieces just to make sure that these bits underneath aren't too high. So this squishing that down, and that's going to be fine. That one, not too much in that corner there. So this is enough in place for it to have our resin board done. The big bits are still going to move around as you can see, but the smaller bits are in place and the rest of it's going to get set in place with resin anyway. Uh, before we do the resin board with all of the holes here, uh, we don't need to do anything in particular with because uh, there's nowhere for the resin to go because it's just with these two central things that uh, we need to make a dam. So I'll show you how I'm going to do this. So I've got a some acetate sheet, put a just a little bit there like that. Just gonna squidge that into there and then use the UV resin, as you might have guessed, is resin which gets set off by UV light. So you can pick up UV resin for four or five pounds and you get a whole thing of it. Uh, you can pick up one of these torches for not very much money and you have this thing and then that should be so that is set at that end that can be the same thing at the other end then we can just begin to put some resin along the join here and this sets very quickly so I'm just going to put a bit in I'm holding it in place now with the torch. So I'm going to do that all the way along the rest of it. 
I can tell you from personal experience that resin leaks are not fun, so it's better to be overcautious rather than um, blasé about it because you don't want to be blurring up loads of resin. Now, the two dams that I made, I'm pretty confident that they're going to be absolutely fine, but to make sure that there's no leak at all, what we do is we take our hot glue gun, put a, uh, a bead of hot glue all the way along this edge here. We'll do that on both of them just to be sure. Next up, we're going to mix our resin. So, this is the one that I use. I've got this from Amazon. I've tried a few different ones in terms of price and um, working well. This is what I have found to be the best one. I've got a link in the uh, video description so you can get it yourself if you want it. Um, <clears throat> this is a one to one mix. So, I'm going to have my uh, clean hand and my dirty hand. Um, yeah, so wear, wear gloves for this because it's, it's sticky. So, let me build this glass. Yeah, so two of these will be enough. This is dirty river water, so let's make it dirty. So we'll do three drips, I mean you barely need anything when you're doing stuff with resin. Three drips of that. <coughs> Mix that in and see what we think of the colour. Now one of these parts is stickier than the other. I'm going to say what does happen is that the stickier one gets um, caught on the edges of whatever you're mixing in, so it's important to scrape the sides off as you're uh, mixing this up. What I really like about this kit is that it came with these scrapey tools where the resin doesn't stick to it as much. So I'm going to do our pour now. Uh, I'll go for that much and see where it gets up to. A little bit more. So the top of this is covered in resin, which is obviously going to be sticky. Um, so I'm going to take some flock here, just sprinkle it over the highest parts. So I'm going to pour the rest of these, mix up some more resin and just fill all the things in, I guess. You can see all of the resin pours done. And uh, most importantly, this one here has got nothing leaking out of it, and there was the other one, so uh, I'm just on that one. So yeah, let's just wait for them to all set. So it's been about 24 hours, and uh, these are all set, you can press and make sure that I think the tap test is pretty decent, and once that's done you can then remove this. Now to be absolutely certain that you can remove this, and when you pull this, it shouldn't move any of this resin here. So as you can see, that's not doing anything apart from bending itself. Um, if, it, if it starts moving the resin at all, that means it's not set. So to remove it, all you're gonna do is just grab it and pull. And bring off the glue from underneath, we get rid of that. And some of the UV resin that uh, you put on may be around that, like that. But essentially, that is done. So the board got to a point where I was actually able to play a couple of games on it um, without it being fully finished. And I realised that I need to do a couple of things to make it better. So first off, all of this, um, all of the rocks or rubble bits, uh, I am going to take off because. I've realised as well that I can have a building footprint that big with a that on top of it and if there's bits like this which are in the way then they're gonna, the building is going to be uneven. As you can see 
all I'm doing to get rid of them is just some of them are uh, loose anyway, so just rolling my hand over and they fall off. So I've been on a couple of them already. Take some of this water down PVA that I uh, spray the board with. The rubber that's down here already, uh, I'm gonna cover that with water down PVA. And then I'm gonna put some gravestone flock over the top of it just, just to break it up a bit. My, uh, my friend commented, and he's probably right, that in places it looks a little bit like it could be straw rather than building rubble because of the color. So let's get rid of that as a Hard to disagree with him in places. Take our greystone block. Let's break up the colour with some. May not come up on camera, doubt that it will. But... Okay, so I'm going to across the rest of them. And here is the board in all of its glory. Not quite finished yet, but getting closer every single day. Really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have done, then please leave a like. Uh, please leave any comments about the board itself or anything you've learned or anything you'd like to see on the channel. Please hit the notification bell so you know when the next uh, part of this series is coming out. And uh, yeah, look forward to showing you another video soon. Um, bye.